Here you have a Weber carburetor. <clears throat> in this video I'm going to show you how to install this thing on an intake. This one specifically for a Mazda B2200 or 2000. It is a Weber carburetor. This model number would be K675G. Should be a 3236DG EV. Let me get a cool gas line with it. <clears throat> a bunch of crap. Let's see if you can still see it there. There you go. The carburetor. <clears throat> Some springs and stuff. One of these, which mine didn't come with. You got your filter and your adapter kit. And instructions. Slim and skinny filter. That's the one I want. Here's a Mazda intake. I took it out. I, this is a spare one I have. I just want to show you how to install it so you can get a complete 360 view of what I'm doing without it being under the hood. Now you got these studs here. These four studs, you have to remove them to allow for this beautiful adapter plate here. And I'm going to show you a mod that they messed up right here. They, uh, for that right there, the, <clears throat> what is that, the PCV hose? Well, they, they cut it wrong on every one I've ever put on. So I'm going to show you how to make that work. The easiest way to remove these, get you two nuts. That's what you need is two nuts. They screw it on there upside down. of the two nuts hold on to it. Those buggers. Alright, once you remove all them beautiful studs, mind you these are 12, and I'm not even worried about taking that off because I'll never use them again. Now, there goes that wrench. Remove your EGR valve, please. Because once you install a Weber, you no longer need it depending on what state you're in. Of course, this carburetor is probably illegal in California. I think everything is illegal in California. But when you live in Arkansas like I do, you can run straight gas out of your tailpipe and get away with it. <clears throat> anyway, remove the EGR. Now, I'm not going to show how to make this plate, but you can pretty much make a plate that goes over this and then uh, what I did is basically use that as a template, make a plate exactly like that, being quarter inch, three sixteenths steel, whatever. Cut these, cut about half of that off of there around the edges. Then you could just use this gasket right here. It's just a paper or a metal gasket. Just cover that hole up because you no longer need these. All right. And of course, once you remove all the carburetor and stuff, you're going to have all these vacuum lines here. Two of them here. You'll use that one. That is water. water, water, water. Yeah. And then there is none underneath. That's also a water jacket. <clears throat> yeah, and these two. You gotta, well, I don't think this one goes to anything, but you need to plug one of them. This one's the one you plug. That one doesn't go here. Anyhow, to install the adapter plates, I suggest sanding all of this. Get it down to with like a 150 grit, I do say. It takes all the milling off of Well, these ain't so bad. Anyway, see this. Once you get to close up this, see how close that is to that right there? There's no way you can put a hose on that with that like that. So I'm going to take the edge of this off and I'll be right back. All right, once you do that, it looks something like that. So it took the corner off of it. I just used a old bench grinder. And then it had, has one of those wire wheels on it that takes it off, takes it down, looks smooth. Anyway, that's what it looks like now. 
get it in the sunlight. See, now you got gap to put that hose back on. I don't know why they did that like that. But they just had to take that edge off. Anyway, it's still hot. Now, you put your gasket on. This is not where this carburetor is going to go, so I'm just showing you really how it's just going on there. <clears throat> I'm not tightening anything down, I'm just showing you how to do it. All right, the tapered, beautiful tapers, and the angle. That. They don't send a tool with that. All right. All right, so you take your tapered, 3 16ths, by the way. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you shove it on there. And down, through again. It's lined up. Now these do not, they need to be snug. But if you over tighten them, you can crack the aluminum and then you've got a vacuum leak that you ain't, you ain't figured out. <laughs> it takes a while to figure it out. Let's just say that. It took me a long time, I cracked mine. Get up there. to line these holes up very well from the factory either. <clears throat> Alright, once you get in this one snug down, you won't tighten that too much. Like I said, you may crack it. Now, these right here. On mine, you see that little lip right there? That's pretty much all that holds this thing down with the gasket. Um, do not over tighten this. Because I cracked mine right here by over tightening it. And if it cracks around that, then you got a vacuum leak. So, what should I do? Get your, uh, your, your gasket. I don't know which side goes where, but they're pretty much both the same. They don't hit anything, so I've had them both ways. It doesn't matter. Once you screw that one down, just get it. Don't over tighten. Or you have to buy a new adapter plate, which is fifty dollars. <throat> hey, mother. All right. You just pretty much make those snug. You do not use anything but an Allen wrench. All right. Once you get that one on there, then you put your studs on it. Until they stop, it won't go any further. Okay, then you get your trusty thick gasket and you shed it on there. All right, once you get the studs in, you just screw them down until they stop, put the gasket on, then you put your carpet in. Of course, it sits like that on the motor, so you want the gas line forward, which goes like that. Okay, before you put the nuts on, you gotta put this bracket on. It's gotta go right there. Pulls on the, the throttle right there. Okay, so put those nuts on. Put the wavy nuts, washers. Get to that, get to that one. Take a 12 millimeter and tighten them down. Now these don't have to be that tight either. A little bigger to get to too. The smaller the wrench you have, the better. It won't get much. <clears throat> then you put your back ones on. This isn't really hard to get to, especially if it was on the truck. If you get that one on there, you're talented. 12 millimeter. Tighten it down. Well, your Weber's installed on to the intake, basically. Now I'm going to kind of give you a tutorial of how to adjust everything. And in this kit, it did give... 
tied plugs to put over the holes. So that's good. This right here. Let's see where we at here. This needs to go like that. Which means you gotta find a 12 millimeter bolt, which I do. If you were lucky enough to find one like I was just now, need you a 12 millimeter head. I can't think of what the thread size is, but screw it on there. It's a tight hole, let me tell you that. There you go. My trusty adjustment ratchet and wrench. Spring. There's a little hole at the tip of this. I don't know if you can see that. Where am I at? You see that little hole right there? Yeah. That hole. That hole right there. You can put the spring on it. I do believe I lied to you here. The spring's a lot smaller than mine. Let me see. You can trust the pliers, spread it out so you can get it on there. Okay. And a good light. This goes upward. And mine's a little bit older. It had a bigger spring, so yeah. Spread it out. <clears throat> so you can get it on there. There you go. See how neat that is? You can adjust for the tightness and put it over here like this. Then it'll jump back all the way. This, this is your electric choke. This goes from your alternator, which I'm going to show you now. Now these carburetors, they fit on a lot of different vehicles here. But I'm just specifically showing it for mine. This is the back of an 86 to 89 model alternator. This wire right here should be on top, right there. That one is the one that goes to your electric choke, which is right here. Okay, this is what it looks like installed. This is about how hard it is to get to the bolts when it's on the truck. See that bracket right there? And see, this is where your throttle cable goes. Make sure you get this loose. It does not need to be snug because this has to fall all the way down or your idle will stay way high. Okay. On this one is a 90 to 93 model alternator on a B2200. Let's see if I can show you what it looks like on the back of the alternator. Here's a little bit different. The back of the alternator on these are a lot different. This wire, let's see, right there, 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 there. this one. I don't know if you can see that very well, but that wire all the way. There it is. That is where the 90 to 93 models go. The electric choke. Okay. Also, one more thing. Okay. This is the pressure side of your deal. Your fuel. It comes around and connects into here. Okay. Now this one does not have to be plugged into anything that I have seen ever. There's a screen under here. It's almost like a secondary filter, but it's just a screen that catches the big stuff. You can clean that out once in a while. Yeah. And I'm going to show you about the carburetor. Now that I showed you pretty much how to install it, I got the big stuff out of the way. You, you can understand. This doesn't hook to anything. This is not fuel. This just is a vent of some sort that you could just put a plug over. Because that's what I've got in both of my trucks. This is fuel. Pressure outside in. I think it's one and a half PSI it needs. This is a screen right here. You take that out and there's a little plastic screen in there that catches the big stuff that the fuel filter may not catch for some reason. Why it wouldn't, I don't know. Alright, here is, let's see. This is your, uh, your second idle jet. There's two idle jets in this thing. I can't remember what it's called, but I'll look at this thing in a minute. Okay. There's one idle jet here. This is your main idle right here. Right I'll show you what they look like. All right, let me show you what it looks like. This is the main idle jet. Very simple. <clears throat> you got your size. You can get different sizes. This is a five, 
55, whatever. I don't know what that means. It's got an O-ring in it. And it just sets in there. Now see, if this gets clogged up, your truck will die every single time you let off the gas. <clears throat> It'll start up just fine, but it won't stay idle. <laughs> That's your idle jet. Next up is your secondary idle jet, which I'm not 100% sure what does. But it is a 50. 50. Yeah. yeah. Almost the same. A little bit smaller. Something starts happening. Clean that one out too. Because I clean them both out at the same time. If mine quits. Now I'm going to show you what that looks like. I do believe it's a 17. I do not believe it's a 17. It is a 19. Okay. Yeah. Show you what it looks like when I'm talking about a screen here. See a little screen? And that gets clogged up. It does the same thing as a fuel filter. Won't let fuel in. So keep that clean. That don't go to nothing. That's just a not from Oslo. This is something that's really confusing a lot of times. This right here is your cold idle start. Okay. This adjusts your speed when it's cold. When you hit the gas the first time, let's see, let's you'll see it. Uh -huh. When you hit the first time when it's cold, this cam comes down. Which I'm going to show. Cam right there. So when you give it gas, the cold it hits that cam and then makes you have a high idle when it's cold. That is when this is closed. Okay. Then you you can adjust that just like a regular idle screw. Okay. Then when it starts warming up, that cam starts turning this way. And then gets over that lobe right there, which you could see. Mm -hmm. And once it gets to that point, which I'm going to try to imitate, let's see, it's kind of hard to do. Yeah, I can't make it do it. Anyway, well, once it gets warm, it turns and then it drops down to this idle right here. Okay, this one. It's right there. You just do that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then you have your rich mixture screw. This one. That one adjusts in and out. You're supposed to screw it in until the motor starts acting up. And then before it dies, screw it out until it starts acting up. And then screw it back in halfway to those two in the middle. Basically, you want it in the middle. And that makes it run perfect. Well, yeah. This, if for some reason you're having problems with it uh, idling high even when it's after it's warmed up, you want to adjust this. So basically you loosen three of these. Now this, this takes a lot of basically, you loosen this, turn this out of the way, and see how that comes open. Okay, that, that adjusts that, and that adjusts your cold idle, so you have to readjust that once you move this, and you'll have to adjust this too. If you didn't get that right. <clears throat> Basically you're adjusting to where it won't hit the camera, it will. Until you adjust that. It's a little hard to explain unless I'm standing right next to you. And showing you what it does. Oh. <clears throat> now you gotta install the filter. I wasn't quite through. Like I thought I was. <laughs> and this side goes on that. There's a bump over there. Okay. Put that on there. Put your skews on there, which comes in your trusty bag here. Let me take the camera for you. Put your screws on. These are 10 millimeters. I'm not going to put them on there. You understand what I mean. <clears throat> you got four of them. Put those on. This right here is this. Still not 100% sure what this goes to. But it goes like this. Put that on there. I don't know what that does. <laughs> Put a filter on it or something. Anyway, I never use these. Put that on there. Plug that hole. Put your filter on. Put your beautiful cap on. There you go. See these? Bottom in first. If I can learn how to do it here, it snaps on. Opposite of each other. Nice comb, look bad. 
20 milli, I'm going to put on here. Right. Now, how, how pretty is that? How pretty is that? Yep. And now, now you're done. Make sure you put the bolts in. Now when it's all said and done, it's installed. Make you a little plate, drill you three holes, and you can use RTV on this with the gasket because it is pretty much a straight vacuum. If this leaks, you that's it. It's gonna hesitate and all kinds of crap. Now, on this one, that is your vacuum advance. It goes to your shriver. That is the only vacuum line that hooks up to this thing. And it's on the carburetor. It is this one right there. Okay? Nothing else hooks up. No other vacuum lines hook up. Well, except for that one, which I showed you earlier that has to be grooved out for right there. And that goes to your PCB. And that is pretty much it. You're installed <clears throat> on this one. Remember, that has to be loose. Loose as a goose. You see, that's how I have my spring hooked up. I have two springs. I like mine a little stiffer. Point it straight down. Got double springs on it. I got those from AutoZone. Yeah. Yeah, you are done. Enjoy your pick -em up truck with your new Weber carburetor. Look at that sucker. See, I got two of them. <laughs> that's my 89. That's my 92. I got Weber's and everything. <laughs>